uh, Cork, Cork Derry, the third one yeah. of the, mm. the weekend here. Look at the, obviously Cork and Roscommon. Uh, initially, look at I, I felt for Davy. I thought Roscommon didn't convert the, the big goal chances, and if they did, they probably would have would just snuck that game. The the free at the end as well from Daly, obviously with that. The kind of throw ball. I don't know how he felt. It, it obviously in the rule book. It is. It is. A, it is a free. So uh, look at David be hugely, hugely disappointed and frustrated by 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 that and by by just losing out by by that little like. So um, I felt I felt for him to be honest with you. I did. Uh, Cork though, Cork. Are, you know, in fairness, never say die attitude. They're fucking. They have a real. Uh, they have a few dogs in that team. Uh, this year, and look, that's that's obviously Kevin Welch's good influence of instilling that belief into that that squad. Like so, uh, look at I still fancy Derry Derry the weekend. I can't see I can't see past Derry here to be honest with you. No, no, I I think Derry it'll be it'll be death by a thousand cuts. You know, I think it'll be slow. I think it'll be processed. It'll be meti- it'll be meticulous. It'll be methodical. You know, and and that's that's the thing about Derry now, and. Uh, They've moved on and they've grown, you know, they've grown tactically, they've grown, you know, their coaching is, is obviously at a very high capacity. Uh, I have to give huge respect to Kieran Mina, uh, who, who came in in a very, very difficult situation, you know, before the Ulster final. The group of players have shown the maturity as well to, to sort of park that now and move on and, and, and grow and develop and, and come through, you know, a difficult group as well, where it was an Ulster minefield, you know, and, and a tricky game in there again, Claire as well. But... Listen, for me, and uh, you talked about Roscommon last week and, and Cork. Mm-hmm. Cork sort of obviously looked at the first half. Roscommon were playing, you know, the, the style of football they've played all year, which which is the slow possession and, game. Yeah. Obviously, when you have the ball, the opposition can't hurt you. So there was obviously an element of that as well. You know, keep the ball, bide their time, try and work a structured attack. And they're probably, Roscommon are very early in their development for a structured attack as yeah. well. You can, you can see that. But when Cork got after them, and really, really pressed them and put pressure on them. There was a vulnerability in Roscommon's defenders, you know, which, which there has been and which I was surprised that a lot of other teams in Division 1 allowed them to dictate those sort of matters in games. But I just think this Derry team are different. This Derry team are different. Derry are one of the best teams in a 1v1 situation. Uh, there's so many good players, you know, McKinless at the back as well, uh, McCluskey. You know, these guys are very, very comfortable taking a man on in a 1v1 situation. So if Cork are to press Derry, Derry could score a lot of goals. They could score a lot of goals because that won't phase Derry and it. It won't phase them because they, they they are one of the very, very best teams at creating at creating one v one situations and they're one of the very best teams in the country at exploiting those one v one situations. And Oren Lynch has obviously got a massive role this year to come out and play that sort of fifteen v fourteen football because a lot of teams now are pushing 14 men inside their 45 and a lot of teams are defending with 14 men inside their 45. So to have that out ball and that plus one, the likes of an Ethan Rafferty, the likes of an Oren Lynch, the likes of a Rory Began, you know, it's a huge advantage, you know. But for me, and uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at Cork, no Brian Hurley last weekend. Yeah, They really think Brian Hurley fit this weekend. Uh, Stephen Sherlock has been the star has been the star performer over the last two weekends against Mayo yeah. and... And Roscommon, I think Kevin Walsh's great work was obviously done behind the scenes as well. A lot of key matchups were nailed against Mayo. He would have known Roscommon very well as well. He would have probably yeah. known to get after you know, Carroll and Nets as well, which they did in the second half. Put a young goalkeeper under severe pressure, you know, with a manic press. Like, and that's okay, you know, against a, a team that, that's maybe coming in, you know, with a little bit of an experience like that. But coming in against Derry, you're looking at Connor Glass and, and, and Brendan Rogers. Now, Ian McGuire. He's one of the best midfielders in Ireland. There's no question about it. He's a phenomenal talent. Yeah. He was responsible for the, 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 the drop on the shoulder and breaking a hole and punching a hole in Roscommon towards the end whenever Conor Daly uh, threw the ball up. But this, for me, is... It's just... It's heaven for Derry. I think it's heaven for Derry because I just feel that they're, they're, they're so far down the road. And uh, from an offensive point of view, there's no one in the country better than them. There is no one in the country better at breaking down a structured defence. There really is not. Like they, their their score to possession ratio is very very high. You know, for every nine ten possessions, they're getting away four or five scores, and uh, nearly one and two. That, that's that's crazy statistics. Crazy statistics. Yeah. You know, and and I've been preaching from from day one on this show, and and you were maybe not fully convinced back in January, but I I was saying Shane McGuigan for me is the top three forwards in this country. He really, really is. Like he he's a phenomenal talent. And I know I, I can't remember who it was said it, but someone said about oh to stop Shane McGuigan, you stop Derry. I, I, I think that's absolute tripe. 
I think that's absolutely right because you need a you need a marquee forward, and this is where I would say if you were coming in on Sunday as Mayo, you'd be delighted if Shane McGuigan playing against Dublin on, on on Sunday for Mayo, you know, and that's that's the key thing for me. Even if you do take Shane McGuigan out of it and you double mark him, there's so many other avenues that they can hurt you. McFall, Doherty, uh, put Cassidy's having a brilliant season as well. Connor Glass can break forward from midfield. Brendan Rodgers. The multiple options, the multiple options, you know. So still not the same as still not the same as we say. I know, I know, and I don't want to be disrespectful here. I, I think, yeah, McGregor is a class player. He's probably a nine yeah. or ten player. But the other players you mentioned them don't no disrespect to them. But we say to the Tyrones, the the other options they have in the forward line, the Dublins, the Kerrys. The, to me, Stevie, uh, don't get me wrong. I think Derry are, are probably probably one of the top two best coach teams in the country here. And I think they're maximising everything, every ounce out of that squad here. Now, I'm still, don't get me wrong here, I said that, look, they're no doubt they're in the top, they'll be in the top four uh, after this weekend, they'll be in the semi-final yeah. after this weekend, and, you know, we'll see after that here. But, like, I, I'm still not fully convinced, can they go on and win the All-Ireland uh, with, the, with the way they play and with the, apart from, if you nullify McGregor, are the other players going to step up here? Are they going to have an 8 out of 10 game? Look, at Kieran McFall is a big plus to them this year. I still have a lot of, obviously, uh, Cassidy, Heron, they're, Ethan Doherty. They're all really, really good players. But are they, are they? you know, it's the same as, you know, the Canavans, the McCurries, the uh, the three or four boys from Dublin, like uh, the Kerrys? No, I, 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 the biggest, I think the biggest problem for them last year was that, that Galway came in and mirror imaged them, you know, in the semi-final. Really, really mirror imaged them and they struggled. Monaghan came into Selig Park in the first group game and mirror imaged them, right? And, and they obviously struggled to get it, but they still got a result. I, I just think they've grown a little bit more tactically in that in that if a team does set up like that, you know, they have the options now. They're also back to back Ulster champions, which probably doesn't get enough credit. Now the other yeah. thing then is well, last year, it's a bit like Donegal, when they won their first Ulster in twenty twenty eleven, you know, McGuinness talks about how they were, you know, drunk on the streets four o'clock in the morning and they were partying hard and you know, they probably didn't really get a you know they didn't really get probably get the the full can whack in a semi-final that they, that they probably thought they could and then the following year they come back one of the game one Ulster game but they're a lot more mature handled the celebrations a lot better and I think that's a similar thing to Derry this year I think last year there was like I know from up here like there was phenomenal hype around them last year phenomenal hype and boys writing songs and fucking statues being built and all sorts of carry on and you look at that now and you're thinking this year they got through the one Ulster. I know the provincials were a little bit of a of of a, of a damp scrub this year because they didn't really have a massive relevance on the on the All Ireland. But they're it's still back to back champions. Yeah, yeah. It still primes them. It still gives them another big day. They got through a penalty shootout, you know. And I just think that they're probably maybe not just getting enough respect. And hey, they've come in this year, Henda. Unbelievable hype about them last year because of the way they dismantled Clare in the quarter final. The goals they scored, yeah. unbelievable. They're coming in a little bit quieter this year. They're coming a little bit quieter, you know, and there's not an awful lot of talk about Derry this weekend. All the talks about Dublin, Mayo, Kerry, Tyrone. There's very little talk about Derry and there's very little talk about Cork. And listen, I have to be respectful to Cork here too as well. You know, the wide open spaces in Crow Park, the athleticism, the pace that they have. Yeah. They, they could be a thorn in Derry's side, but I think if Derry bring their A game, there's only one winner here on Sunday. Yeah, no, I look at, yeah, I... Yeah, obviously we don't want to be disrespectful to Cork here. I think Cork have, have kind of maxed out what they were like. Obviously, the defeat to Clare was very disappointing for them in the provincials. They were allowed to have got to a Munster final and really went after Kerry. But I think obviously in the group stages, they you know they only lost to Kerry by two yeah. points or a goal and they whatever it was two points. And yeah. obviously they beat uh, beat Mayo in the group stages. Look at they've 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 set the foundations down for for next year here, and it's, everything's kind of bonus territory here from now on in. Like so, um, yeah. as you said. As you said there, Stevie, look at Derry are Derry are two two years further down the road here than, than Cork. Like, you know, this is yeah. this is kind of year one project with Cork here, and we see where they are next year from 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 the foundations they've made this year. Like so look at I I'm gonna say Derry, I'm gonna say Derry by probably four points as well, to be honest with you. I don't know what you feel. Yeah, no, I think I think Derry Derry by more than three, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um 